Hey, it's your boy, The Real Hustler, out here at the Townsend Hotel in Birmingham, Michigan. And I'm about to talk to Marlon Wayans regarding his new movie, A Haunted House 2. It was a little over a year ago that he dropped the first one, which turned out to be a huge success. So we'll get a chance to talk to him again about this new one and see what's going on in Wayans' world. One year ago, in this house, one man screamed like a... What are you doing? Bitch, there's a ghost in the house. Deuces! I don't know about this place, baby. You said that about every house we looked at. This one's different. I, I just... No, this one is perfect. Come on, Shiloh Jr. It's like he's scared to come in the house. <laughs> Call 911! Tell him the dog is white! Tell him the dog is white! Oh. It's happening again, dog. <laughs> I need your help. Hell no! <laughs> I talked to you last time you were here for a haunted house. Yes. Man, that movie did well. Yeah, it did. Just that, were you surprised with how successful it was? Um, you know, I just work. I don't. I never look and go. I'm achieve this. I, I don't put pressure on myself. I just put my head down and I work and I let the results be what the results are. And hopefully they're successful. And if they're not, there's still still success and failure because the reality is, you know, this for me is not something that I do one time. I have a career, I've been doing this 25 years. Mm -hmm. You gotta expect some ups, expect some downs, um, but either way it goes, you gotta maintain your balance. So I always, I, I put forth my be best effort. I, I try, to, try to kill myself on every project, whether that be in the acting, the filming, the writing, the promotion, and then j just let, let it be what God's gonna make it be. Okay. And he made it successful. <laughs> so I gotta thank you, big up up there, thank you very much. Well. Based on the success of the first one, I mean, you got to have some expectations for the second one, right? No. Uh, you, you, I, once again, I, I, I know this. I know that I made a movie that is funny. I've watched it play now in five different cities mm -hmm. with really huge laughs. Mm -hmm. And I've asked people to tweet me at Marlon Wayans when they see the movie and tell me what their thoughts are on the movie. And, you know, people, especially in social media, they're they going to be real. I, I'd be sorry if I ever asked that because they will, <laughs> they will, they quick to hate. And I've got nothing but love and nothing but I love this movie. Uh, funny, just as funny as the first. I've gotten a lot of funnier well, than the it's first. It's definitely funny. Yeah. But in the first one, it was like, to me, I'm like, you stepped out the box. Yeah. With this one, it's like, man, there's no boundaries, no box or anything. You just, <laughs> you just went for it on this one. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. I'm like, man, I was like, he just took it to a whole other level. Yeah, that boy don't make no sense. <laughs> he a fool. I'm gonna get like, boy, that boy, boo. But I know you mentioned last night at the screening that you say you, you, you mentioned your mom. Yeah. Has your mother seen the movie? No. <laughs> My mom last movie. She was like, I'm gonna go out and support. She said, no. Oh. <laughs> Same for you, mom. I'll, I'll let you know when the coast is clear. I just because my mom, my mom's old school. My mom, she'll see it, and my mom will laugh, mm -hmm. and then she'll go, "Boy, you just outrageous." <laughs> she'll be a lot less judgmental, funny enough, than like my siblings will be. Mm -hmm. Like my older sibling, my sister will be harder on me than my mom. My mom gets me. My mom knows the son that she raised. She knows the kind of, you know, child I've been. She knows I'm Curious George, I'm mischievous. So my mom would expect that of me. Every now and then she'll put me aside, baby, you watch out for this here or that there. But for the most part, my mom's come to enjoy. So, okay. you know, maybe I'll let her go see this. Okay. Now my dad, he's judgmental. I ain't gonna let him see this. He'll be scared, he, they kick him out of the Kingdom Hall for this. Be, I'm trying to be one of the 144,000 and you keep making movies like this. I was just 138,932. Now I'm all the way back down, and I might not make it in. He'll still make it in. I won't. I'm curious. Yes. You know, because you come from a big family, yes. like I did. Who, who is the, the person who livens up the, the family functions? Um, we all do. We all do. And but there's always way. that one that just... I'm, I'm, it's funny because... We all do. Like I, I gotta, I gotta say, we definitely all do. We have nephews and nieces and 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 and, and you know the grandkids and the not my grandkids. I ain't got a grandkids, <laughs> but the the, the 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 everybody's children. They're all funny, and the, the children are funny. And so you know, but I'm probably the one brother that everybody uh, gets to tease. They just think I'm crazy. They get <laughs> they get a kick out of me. Yeah, I, I can only imagine how. To you know, y'all family functions are. Yeah, it's loud, boisterous, 
crowded and everybody fighting for food. You ever see uh, ants at a picnic? Yeah. That's what our family is. There's millions <laughs> of them swarming the food, but cracking jokes along the way. That's, that's what's that. Now, a haunted house, too. Yes. I know the first one, you said you thought about using your house. Did you use your house in this one? No. Uh, um, no, we messed somebody else's house up. No. <laughs> we used the same house that um, they used in American Beauty. Okay. House. So, okay. Um, and the owner was great. She just got a kick out the movie, seen all the stuff we was doing, and was like, oh, you work. It's crazy. And she enjoyed it. And uh, we had a lot of fun making it. Okay. That's what's up. So, you know, you man, you, you, you're a very talented guy. You know, you're mostly known for your comedy work. Yeah. But do you have any uh, aspirations to do any drama? Oh, definitely, man. I, I love drama. I just, I choose comedy because it's harder. It's not because it's easier for me. It's actually harder. Really? Um, yeah, co comedy is one of the hardest things you'll ever do. Because drama is... You know, you're basically just, you're allowing yourself to feel pain and allow yourself to be truthful about emotions. Comedy is taking pain and making people laugh about it. Like with Haunted House, I'm making people laugh about horror movies, you know, and that's usually something scary. But there's something funny in everything. There's something funny in death. There's funny in every subject, any subject. And the reality is the, the, trying to find the humor in those dark places, trying to find that light in the dark, for me, is a challenge. And for everybody, it's a challenge. So that's why I choose comedy. But I would love to do a comedy, I mean, a drama about comedy. So I would love to do the Richard Pryor story. I don't know if it's going to ever ha happen or when it does happen. I hear Chris, um, the great Lee Daniels is uh, directing it. So that that happens that'd be awesome and if not you know whoever gets it I can't wait to see the movie right. um, but it's uh, I know I've been preparing there's things that you prepare for and that you you're supposed to do I prepare for something like that my my whole life and I okay. just go down now you're doing stand up now right yeah. you and your Sean were yeah. doing stand up I've been doing it for three and a half years now and I love it you know I tour tour the country and you figure out what works in Detroit, what works in New York, sometimes what works in Atlanta ain't going to work in, uh, in in different parts of Georgia. So you just try and find that different formula to find that one joke that makes the world laugh. Okay. And I'm actually thinking about doing a tour, not thinking, but we're planning, me, Sean, Damon, and Keenan, to do the first ever Wayne's Brothers tour. Okay. Yeah. That's what's up. I want to ask you a question, yeah. uh, because, I, you know, social media, I, I, I see that you were going at a little... Twitter beef with Lord Jamal. Yeah, because I'm king of the Twitter beef. And I let people know, you don't want no Twitter beef with me because I'm gangster. No, I did. You know, I go, I went at it with him. I went at it with Joe. But uh, I, I don't mind speaking my mind. I, and when people say things that's out their neck, I don't mind con ch challenging them. You know. Now, this came off of something that happened with uh, your good friend Omar Epps. Yeah. Right, right. Okay. So he's he was uh, he posted something about Omar being in a skirt. And it's not like Omar was on a skirt with his legs out and heels. Omar was in a skirt, like something like this, mm -hmm. over his pants. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, I, I just I, I just sit there and I go, first of all, it, it, it's wrong on so many levels. First of all, for you to sit there and accuse a man of being gay that ain't gay. And then not only accuse, but then really bash homosexuals, period. You know, at this day and age, you know, you're supposed to be uh, an elevated person. Mm -hmm. And for me, I go, um, fashion is fashion. Mm -hmm. That don't determine who you are. If you talk about, you want to talk about feminine fashion, let's go back to the 70s when brothers was rocking tight corduroy pants with bell bottoms and platform shoes and blouses, you know. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about, you know, back in Africa when they're wearing skirts. Let's talk about, you know, uh, you know, different people wear different things. And it doesn't, uh, it doesn't say what your sexuality is. Nor for, it's, and even if that was your sexuality, who are you to judge that? Who are you to put that out there in a negative way? Like, you know, in this day and age, it's like, you know, in the year 2014, for you to be that small, narrow-minded to, to, to promote any kind of hate, period. Mm -hmm. I just don't find it cool. I'm not. I'm not one that stands for bullying. And I, you know, you, you know, you, oh, you sold out to the Jews. And 
He sounds crazy. You sound like, you know, come on, man. I, I, I work in Hollywood. Of course you work with Jewish people. And a lot, I have Jewish friends, you know what I'm saying? It's like, so I'm not supposed to have Jewish friends because I'm black? Oh, and I, I'm in Hollywood. You, you know, you doing gay stuff. I work with gay people too. Mm -hmm. It's Hollywood, you know? And I, I, I know gay people. I have gay friends and I have gay associates. I have Jewish associates. I have Hispanic associates. I have black associates. You know, my business is urban. I am from the projects. And even though I'm from the projects, I've elevated beyond the place of sitting around hating on any sect of people. And if anybody got a problem with that, you know where to find me. Okay. So have y'all squashed it or everything? It ain't a beef beef. Ain't like if I see it, I'm going to punch him in the face. It's just like, <laughs> yo, you spoke your mind, I speak mine. You know, you speak, you spoke your percentage, I speak my percentage. And, you know, for me, um, you know, it, it, it lives and it dies on Twitter. Omar's my family. And at the end of the day, that's my brother. It's not a fashion thing. That's a family thing. So, you know, I ain't going to let him, you know, if I said something bad about, you know, uh, I don't know, Grand Pooba, I'm pretty sure he's like, yo, Pooba ain't like that. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it is what it is. It lives on Twitter, it dies on Twitter. I hope he elevates his thinking past, you know, the 1950s and joins us in the year 2014 where, you know, people are people. So now you, you work with a lot of people, man. Anybody in particular that you would like to work with at this point in your career? Um, you know, I would love to work with Eddie Murphy again. You know, I worked with him in Norbit, and that was a blast, you know. Um, he actually laughed at my work, and I was just like, oh, wow. But I would love to I watched that the other night, and I said, no. <laughs> Eddie was, like, laughing. Like, I did that, and I heard him. He was in makeup. He came out of makeup, and he got to watch the movie, and he was, he got to watch the stuff that I did, because I did that when he wasn't on set. And mm -hmm. all I heard was him going, oh, oh, like, laughing. And I was just like, oh, my God. I had to take a beat and, like, look up to God and go, thank you. I made my hero laugh. Um, so I'd love to work with him, um, Car Jim Carrey. Um, I'd love to work with you know Tom Hanks again, but in a bigger way. Um, I've worked with a lot of people. So you know Robert De Niro. I'd like to work with honestly anybody that that's great. That's gonna help make me better at what so I. That do. means that we're gonna work together then. We work, <laughs> but we're working together right now. Ain't no need to do this twice. Right? <laughs> well, hey man, I appreciate you taking the time to oh, talk you. to me. Uh, much success to a haunted house too. Thank you. Make sure you check out uh, uh, whatthefunny.com. That's my digital website, uh, my digital comedy network. With we got tons of jokes and tons of funny stuff. Just go check it out. Go click one, one or two or three videos. You will be hooked. Whatthefunny.com. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Marlon Wayans. Okay, you got a plug when the movie comes out. Yes, and the movie comes out April eighteenth, a haunted house too. If you want to laugh, go see it. <laughs> You heard it, Marlon Wayans. Yes, sir. The haunted house too. You need a blood sacrifice. What in the hell? You want to get rid of the demon or not? Demons? Worse. The Kardashians. <gasps> they got Lamar, they got Kanye. They gonna get your ass.